kitchen. Welcome to my home. I love to cook because cooking for me is just a celebration of making sure that I'm providing comfort food for those that I have around me. So today we're going to be cooking peach cobbler. Why peach cobbler? Because there's not a wrong time. There's never a wrong time to have some peach cobbler with some vanilla ice cream. So today I want to share with you my peach cobbler recipe. And so what you're going to need is, um, some pie crust. It's all about saving time because we're all busy with work and with life. So instead of making my own pie crust, I have this uh, pie crust that's already ready to go. We're going to roll it out and put it on the bottom and put it on the top. We're going to need some sugar. We're going to need some vanilla. We're going to need some cinnamon. We're going to need some cornstarch to make sure that our roux is thick and creamy. When we put our peaches in the sauce, of course, we're going to need brown sugar and our peaches. I didn't pick my own peaches. I just went to the store, got some frozen peaches. You can use your peaches either frozen or thawed. These have been thawed out, so there's a little bit um, already thawed and ready to go. There are three bags, three bags um, for what we're going to prepare today. We have some vanilla extract. We have some butter. We already talked about the cornstarch. The egg is to brush over the pie crust, so it just gives it that brown um, taste. Cinnamon, we're gonna top it off with some cinnamon. And I think we're ready to start. What do you think? So basically, I'm gonna use the top crust to create a braiding similar to this on top of the peach cobbler. It's gonna make it decorative and it's going to make it look pretty. And then I just like this part of it because I get a chance to use my skills as it relates to like almost like sewing because you're integrating bottom top, bottom top. You're weaving it together so it looks like this. Once we get the um, peaches in the, in the pan, and then we're going to um, put this breeding, this, this pie crust on top. So like this, we'll take one of these and then we're just going to alternate it. Like that. Watch this space. So now that we know all the ingredients that we're going to include in this peach cobbler, let's get busy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our frozen peaches. Remember, mine's a thawed, but it doesn't matter. You can use frozen and just put them in the pan. I'm going to put them in the pan. And I am going to warm that up so that I can start putting the, in the other ingredients. But those are the peaches. Okay, so I have it right now on medium high and I'm just going to cook these until they're nice and warm and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to add the other ingredients that goes with the peaches okay so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to add my butter remember this is three tablespoons of butter I'm going to add that in there butter is to make it um, sweet and rich and you want that butter if you decide you don't want that you can exclude it but I love me some butter so I'm gonna put three tablespoons of butter in there you can choose to use more and then I'm going to add my vanilla and I have uh, three tablespoons of vanilla that's gonna go in here and then I'm going to add my brown sugar this is a half a cup of brown sugar and then I'm going to add another half a cup of um, white sugar okay and then I'm going to add my cornstarch the cornstarch is just to make it thick 
and it's going to complement the butter, the sugar, and everything that's needed so that I can have that rich sauce that we all like to see in our um, peach cobbler. So I'm just going to let this melt down. And so I'll be right back. So cooking is an expression that crosses boundaries. Everyone enjoys eating, at least everyone I know. And so as you can see, our peaches are simmering nicely. I'm going to do a taste of them soon. But while that is brewing right now and are simmering, I'm going to turn it down, is I'm going to do a crust at the bottom of this peach cobbler. This is like a lasagna pan. And then what I'm gonna do is with the pie crust, is I'm gonna lay it on the bottom. This is optional. You can decide if you want your, your peach cobbler to have crust on the bottom. I prefer to have one. And I'm gonna use two because this is a pretty large um, pan. And so I'm just gonna press it down and you know spread it up like this. Cause remember we're gonna we're gonna braid the top of the crust to give it that home style cooking. So I would just press along the sides of the edges so that you have it there like that. And then what I like to do, you should always do this. I take a fork and I just kind of give it some air bubbles. It's really not air bubbles, but it allows for the heat to come through the pie crust. So it's going to give it that crunchy type um, layer that won't feel so doughy. So remember to do this. Some folks will do this piece and they'll put it in the oven and bake it a little bit. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm using these punctures to help it bake in an even form. I think that does it. You just wanna make sure it spreads itself. And then I'm just gonna put my, my peaches in here. But let's taste, let's do a taste test. So as you can see, that cornstarch has made a really nice sauce and, and roux for the peaches. I'm going to see if it needs anything else. Mmm. Yo, wow. Mmm. Mmm. I think it needs a little cinnamon. So I'm going to add a little cinnamon in there. I think I need a little nutmeg too. So unfortunately this is not already open. Live TV. So I'm going to add a little cinnamon on there. A little nutmeg. And then salt. You know, salt does not make it salty. It just kind of takes care of the bitterness that you might find um, from all the juices. I'm gonna add a little salt. I would say that's about a teaspoon. And then what I'm gonna do, just for flavor, I'm gonna add lemon. Okay. And then I'm gonna Saute. Look at that. That looks yummy. I'm going to do another taste on it. I have a secret ingredient that I didn't get a chance to put in here. But sometimes I have um, fried some bacon. And I put a little bacon grease in there. And that is my secret sauce that I might put in my peach cobbler. But I don't have any bacon. I have it, but it's frozen. <laughs> so this will not have the, the bacon drippings that from in there, but you might want to try that to see if you like it. Okay, I put all those ingredients. I'm going to do one more taste test. 
perfect. Perfect. I'm just going to add a little lemon zest. Not a lot. Because we have that, that flavor in there. So a little lemon zest in there. I don't think it needs anything else. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pour my peaches inside here and I'm going to braid it up on top. off the oven I'm gonna get that last little scoop doesn't that look yummy done with our peach cobbler and so I used to say one braid is just like a, a, a journey of life an expression of love it's just how you want to present your peach cobbler and see the way I'm doing it is I'm gonna alternate it like that and I'm gonna keep braiding it like that And then I do have another pie crust that I haven't rolled out. So I'm going to use these pieces that I have right now. And then I'm going to um, finish it up. Don't worry about the preciseness of it. You can be as creative as you want. You can have a dangle. You can do whatever you want. Um, because it's not totally complete, I'm going to open up one more of my pie crust so that I can finish braiding it up. And see, this just saves a lot of time when you don't have to um, make the pie crust on your own. Just roll it off. Comes in the store. Sometimes you can use. Um, What I, biscuit dough, sometimes people use it. And sprinkle some flour on it as well. And usually you can use your, um, a rolling pan. My grandson, I don't know where you put the rolling pan. In. <laughs> so I have to do without what it, and it still will come off just as nice. Remember, these are the braids that I'm using to put on top of my... I'm going to be creative. I'm going to do half there and do a little bit there. Do there. So you just kind of decorate it and braid it the way you want. I got really creative, as you can see, with this. But when you dip, when you cut it out, that makes sure that everyone has a little bit of the crust on it and um, that. So what I'm going to do right now is just brush my egg white on top of here. The oven is set for 375 degrees. I'm going to let it cook for about 40 minutes, but I'm going to keep my eye on it um, to make sure I don't overcook it. But I would say between 40 and 45 minutes for at 375 degrees. This is just going to make the crust really yummy and looking so nice. It's just your um, egg. OK, 
Okay. It's just going to make it really nice and brown. I think that's enough. Okay, and then what I'm going to do with that after that is I'm going to add a little cinnamon on top with some sugar. And you just want to just sprinkle it. It's good to put it in your hand because then it's more um, controlled that way. Here we are. Rhonda's peach cobbler. I'm going to put this in the oven. 375 degrees. I'm gonna put it on the lower shelf. I'm gonna put it right there in the center of the oven. And then I'm gonna come back and get that peach cobbler back out in about 40 minutes. I can smell the aroma of the peach cobbler. I think it's ready. Let's see. Looking good. Look at this. This is a recipe that has a story and the story is called Peach Cobbler. So I'm not quite sure what story you have of a peach cobbler, but for me, it reminds me of family. It reminds me of gratitude, not just the feeling of gratitude, it's the action of gratitude. Because whenever my grandma or my mom made peach cobbler, that recipe was made out of love. I hope you enjoy my recipe for Southern peach cobbler from Rhonda's Kitchen. Let's take a bite. Let's dig in. I just love cooking because cooking for me is a stress buster. This is baking, but I prefer to cook rather than bake. But I made this for family because holidays is not a holiday without peach cobbler. Look at that. Doesn't that look yummy? And look how I breaded the crust on there. And uh, ooh, I'm going to have to use two. Ugh. This is brand new, fresh, frozen ice cream, French vanilla. And then I'm going to scoop up, oops. How many scoops would, do you have on, would you put on your, because it's so hard, I would do two scoops. I'm going to do one more because these are little scoops because it, it is so frozen. So I'm just going to do those two and put the lid back on this ice cream. I can't wait to taste it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. It is so good. You have to try this recipe. And the vanilla ice cream on the peaches and the crust is phenomenal. I think you should cook yourself some. Enjoy. But we've come to the end of this segment where I've just cooked a phenomenal peach cobbler. But as we go into the holiday seasons, I want us to be mindful of gratitude. And for me, I'm grateful for my friends, for my family, for 
what God has created in this universe, the nature, the birds, the sunshine, the ground we stand on, the ability to heal, the ability to be resilient. I am just so proud that um, I'm able to present this peach cobbler to you today. But in the season of gratitude, we have to also remember those who are distressed. And when I say distress, I'm thinking about the people who are unhoused or the people who lack um, food and they have food insecurity or people dealing with all kinds of issues. Let's be mindful of them. Let's lift them up and let's be a society that cares for the least of us. That's my prayer. That's this is my peach cobbler. And this is the season of gratitude. Thank you for being with me today.